Hi, and welcome to the online MBA Spotlight with Poets and Quants. Today, we are hearing from our featured school, the Wake Forest University School of Business in North Carolina. Our guests include Sherry Moss. Sherry is the Associate Dean of the MBA programs. And also here with us, we have the pleasure of having two students, uh, Wake Forest MBA student Wanda Williams and Kyle Sirocco. So thank you guys for joining us today, and um, I look forward to hearing about your experiences. First, I'm going to pop over to Sherry and ask, you know, could you please share just a general overview of what the MBA degree entails? Yes, yeah, so our program, online MBA program, launched in the fall of 2020 at the height of the pandemic. Um, so it was actually a pretty good time to launch because people were moving away from on-ground programs into online programs. Um, our very first class graduated just this past December um, in 2022. Our program is designed to be taken over the course of 27 months where you take about six hours of credit at any given time. You usually take three hours in the first half of the semester and three hours in the second half of the semester. And so our semesters are divided up into two parts that are about seven and a half weeks long. Um, once in a while, you'll take two classes at a time, but those are typically 1.5 credit hour classes. So the program was designed for maximum flexibility. And to do this, um, our classes are completely asynchronous so that students can do their coursework at the time uh, and location of their choosing. And you'll see some variety here with our two students and, and where and how they're, they're doing their coursework. Um, but in addition, we, because we are Wake Forest and we are used to a, an, an intimate learning environment, we do have optional synchronous sessions um, with faculty that are recorded so that if you can't um, participate in them, you are able to see them later on. And we hope that our students do join them whenever they can so that they can really get to know their faculty members. And we don't cover any required material during those sessions. We just cover either optional material. Um, we expose you to a guest speaker. We do a deeper dive for those that are interested or possibly help or review sessions um, during those synchronous sessions. And um, typically the students go through the program at the pace that I suggested over 27 months, taking you know typically one, three, three hours at a time. Um, but once in a while they run into um, professional or personal uh, issues in life that cause them to take a brief leave of absence for a semester or so. And then they usually just pop back in and, and pick up more or less where they you know uh, left off. And so, um, Occasionally, people will want to matriculate through a little bit more quickly um, than the pace of the program. And if they've been in the program a semester or two and they have a solid GPA and a good track record, I would approve them to go through a little bit quicker um, than the 27 months as well. So that's a little bit of an overview of how our program works. Yeah, thank you, Sherry, for that. I'm hearing that flexibility seems to be a key um, aspect of the program. What other uh, characteristics or traits does it have that maybe sets it apart from other business schools? Well, this is Wake Forest. And as I mentioned earlier, the, the Wake Forest way is what we call it. And, and that means, and, and for us, a, a very intimate learning environment. The faculty at Wake Forest are very dedicated to their teaching. Um, we have what we call the teacher scholar model, um, but we say um, that the teaching is the more important of two equals and it's mentioned first. And so we take our teaching very seriously, regardless of whether it's a face-to-face -face or an online format. So our faculty are absolutely dedicated to student success and they devote a great deal of time to ensuring that students are getting what they need to out of the program. So long as students are doing their part of that as well. Um, we also emphasize our university motto, which is pro humanitate, which means for humanity. And we want to inculcate in our business students the idea that business is a noble profession and that, that we should focus on providing value in society. Uh, and so everything that we do kind of um, has that flavor um, wrapped around it. Um, I said that our program was asynchronous, even though there are some optional sessions, but we encourage our students to be as involved as they would like to be. Um, and so we're really looking for students who will come in with a growth mindset, looking to get the most out of their experience. I'm really wanting to grow and stretch and 
and develop their business capabilities. Um, and we hope that they will take advantage of all the things that Wake Forest has to offer in terms of interactions with faculty like those sessions and some of the events that we do um, that involve either online students only or um, all MBA students. So for example, we have an kind of internal term that we use called, called One MBA. And this is where uh, online MBA students are invited to events with all of our MBA students, which include you know, completely face-to-face -face and hybrid students. And so they may be invited to professional development events. They may be invited to tailgates, like at a, one of our Wake Forest Demon Deacon football or basketball games, um, trips to other sporting events like the Charlotte um, Football Club, concerts and outings. And so in addition to those one MBA events, we're also um, putting on a special event this September and hopefully every year um, going forward called Deacon Weekend which is specifically for online students. So we hope that we can get as many of them to come to Winston-Salem, um, go to a football game and participate in a set of activities that are unique for our online students, meeting um, classmates from other um, cohorts and, and from other online programs. So this event is in September and we're really looking forward to that. Okay, great. Thank, thanks for sharing that, uh, Sherry. Uh, now kind of going over um, to the student experience, um, I wanted to ask Wanda, uh, why did, what led you to pursue an MBA in the first place? And um, then could you walk through that thought process of uh, how you chose Wake Forest University? Sure. Thanks for the question. Um, so I started my, uh, my journey as a business student in undergrad uh, initially as a traditional student out just outside of uh, high school. Um, and in that, in that course of time, I had an interruption in education where I was, you know, needed to go get out and make money. So I switched gears and, and just went into the workforce. Um, I didn't complete my degree, but uh, I became a truck driver and I did that for 13 years. Um, after having done that, I decided I wanted to go into another profession and in, ended up being engineering is what I chose at that point. I went back to school for my undergraduate degree, finished in engineering, uh, but always with the idea that having um, that technical undergraduate background, I wanted to pair it with an MBA just to give myself uh, further options um, in terms of a career path. And so um, I like the idea of being a people manager uh, more than uh, working so much um, in a technical field. And so th this was my opportunity to do that. So how I chose uh, the MBA program to begin with. Uh, the corporation that I work for, currently they have a partnership with Wake Forest. There are lots of uh, other coworkers that I have that are alumni of the uh, MBA program specifically um, that had very encouraging things to say about the school. And as I did for the research, uh, I, I realized that it was a very credible, creditable school, um, re really well-known reputation in the area. So it just made sense uh, for me to sign up with uh, Wake Forest. Yeah, it certainly feels like you'd have a leg up with an engineering background. Were there certain um, core business um, ideals that, that made you nervous, like maybe management classes or financial classes? Uh, um, the management class is not so much. Uh, I, I've, you know, obviously I've had a very long working, <laughs> working period in my life. I've done lots of jobs. Um, I've been leads. I've been supervisors. I've been a small business owner for a while um, in the trucking industry. Uh, but, but certainly um, understanding more of the financial aspect of it was a big thing for me. Uh, and certainly probably some of the more challenging courses that I've had to take. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. And I definitely want to follow up on some of the courses that you've taken hearing about them. Um, but thanks for sharing, Wanda. And to Kyle, I'd love to pose the same question about what led you um, to pursue an MBA and a little bit about your background. Hi, yeah, thanks. Um, so I am active duty military. I'm in the Air Force right now. I've been in for 15 years. I'm a pilot. And so I, uh, I move around a lot. So one of the big things when I was looking at going going back to school was I needed something, a program that was flexible. So I needed uh, like an online program that Wake Forest is offering. 
Um, so with that, um, why did I choose Wake Forest uh, in there? I, I've heard of Wake Forest, obviously, through a lot of uh, sports and all that. That drew me to it. And then when I started doing my research on it, I, I you know, the U.S. school, um, it rates it really high. It's really competitive to get into. Um, so I just felt it was a, a quality school to go to. Um, so th those are the reasons why, why I chose Wake. And, and an MBA, um, obviously, I'm getting out of the, I've been in for 15 years now. I'm getting out in another five years. So I wanted a degree to go to pair with to be flexible when I get into the civilian sector. And I think an MBA really uh, gives me that flexibility. Yeah, and there's certain qualities, definitely being um, an active duty or any service, uh, military service member. Uh, could you talk about that? Like what kind of qualities you bring to the field of business? Sorry to put you on the spot a little bit. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I mean, the qualities you get from, from the military, obviously, uh, as, as an officer, we learn you know, leadership and strategic leadership in an organization. So you learn about the structure of the, the military is very structured, right? You've got rank top down. Um, so as far as operating within an organization, we, we, we do it really well and effectively. And so how does that translate now into a, into a business world? Um, it's, it's essentially the same, the way they've structured the military, you know, you have, same thing, you have a general, you have a CEO and, and then it works their, their way down to CFOs and, and all of that. So um, you know, my skills and involvement in, in an organization, I understand how it works. And then we were constantly changing uh, processes and everything like that. So even in the business world, you're, you're going to constantly have to pivot and try something new when, when things don't work out. And we're constantly doing that. So, hmm. Yeah, that's great to hear. And Kyle, I wanted to um, continue on to hearing from you about just the learning experiences. Um, being that the, the degree is asynchronous, it gives you kind of that flexibility. How do you manage both being an active duty member, but then also going through business school? Yeah, so it's been it's been pretty easy, honestly. You get you get a week to get a lot of your stuff done, right? So most discussion posts are due Wednesday by midnight. So I'll, I'll start the week on Sunday, kind of review what, what my tasks are for the week, and then kind of um, gather my data for whatever I need to put into my discussion post, do that, and then um, continue on, respond to people, and, and do whatever projects we need to do. One of the things I do like about uh, Wake is that, in, in this program, is that we kind of move together. So I, I came in with a, with a class of, of people, and... I've had the same people in the same classes. So as we've done group projects um, and, and all that, we've gotten to know each other. And I think that's kind of important, you know, something you don't really expect from a, a, uh, um, an online program, I guess. Mm -hmm. Would you say that there's a lot of group work uh, in your schoolwork? Um, the last two classes we've had group projects, but they're very manageable. It's not um, we will do like a, you know, uh, maybe a 30 minute phone call uh, twice a week, maybe once a week, depending on what we need to do. And we'll divide up tasks. Everyone does their tasks. We've done it on like Google files and all that. So it's very manageable. And I mean, I'm, I'm saying this having traveled, I've gone from California to now I'm in the UAE and it's, you know, I can, I can maintain a schedule. I also, you know, I have two kids too at home. So, I, you know, I can work and manage a family and then and still do school on top of it. So it's a very manageable program. I found. Mm -hmm. Was there a uh, time management is something we talk a lot about po at Poets and Quants. Um, and a lot of the online MBA students are working. Um, that's just, just generally across the board, a, a similar experience in many ways. Were there fears about time management for you? What, do, what does that look like in, in holding yourself accountable, I guess, and in, in getting all the work done while still giving yourself freedom to have a personal life? Yeah, exactly. So it's it's just a matter of, of knowing um, knowing where, where I have gaps and in, in, in to, to fill them with obviously schoolwork and all that. So one of the things I do, I have a normally when I'm back at home station, I have a 40 minute drive to work. So I can download these books and I'll listen to them as I'm driving to work and back home. Um, so I'll, I'll, I, I, I can learn um, through listening uh, pretty easily. Uh, and then, you know, I've got a great wife. She's, she's great when I, to help me get through, you know, when I get to do a homework or whatever. So she allows me time. She'll take care of the kids and all that. Um, I'll spend 
maybe a couple of hours each night before I go to bed doing my, maybe my homework and all that. And then I, I'll um, do some stuff on the weekends, but I have so much time. We've done so many trips while also going to school. I play golf at least, you know, once every other week. Um, and then I, you know, hang out with my family. So I, I, I found that the time management piece is, it's not as, uh, it's not as difficult to do once you get a rhythm going. That's good to hear. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, and Wanda, I just wanted to pose kind of the same questions at you. I'd love to get a sense of your learning experience at Wake Forest and like what your classes look like, um, how much group work you have undertaken, that kind of thing. Um, well, I, I guess I could probably pair, excuse me, parry a lot of the same things that Kyle mentioned. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit further along in the program um, than, than Kyle has, has managed to get so far. Uh, so there, there are a substantial number of group projects in terms of uh, the, different, the different classes offering that um, or requiring that. Um, my situation is a little bit different from Kyle. I am also a parent, but I'm a single parent. I have a young child, so uh, my time time restriction is is a lot more stringent for me, and uh, I don't I don't have as much time or flexibility to take trips and do the other things because I am still juggling work and school and a child at home. Um, but I I do I am able to manage the workload, and and so that that was important, and it was a concern. Initially, I had been out of out of school for some years before I decided to go back and do this. So the concern was whether or not I would be able to efficiently do it with all of my other requirements uh, or responsibilities. But but you know, it, like Kyle said, it, it's manageable um, as long as you're committed and dedicated to getting the work done. Um, I'm, I don't, I don't forgive me. Remember all the questions you asked him, so you might have to just give me a little bit of a reminder so I will make sure I, I touch on everything. Of course. Um, thanks for talking about your experience, Wanda. Um, I wanted to know what went into weighing the options of like, I'm, I am a single mother and I have the duties of being a mother, but I want to go back to school. How did you even look at that and, and look at the pros and cons and weigh all of that? Uh, very, uh, I, I definitely, I take time to to make, uh, you know, the necessary considerations and there, certainly weigh all of those things. I mean, it's it's a bit of a sacrifice, but I look at it as that. Um, it's short term, mm -hmm. uh, two years, you know, seems long, but hindsight, it's not very. Uh, and it was, it's worth it to me to put the time in uh, for the benefit, I, unlike um, some of my, my peers at work. I didn't go to engineering school right outside of high school. Um, I don't have the flexibility to relocate different organ different organizations or different states and cities throughout the country to advance my career quickly. So again, this was the opportunity for me to sort of level the playing field. Um, get, given, given this additional education gives me at the organization where I work and in other organizations outside of that, an opportunity for uh, higher level positions that I wouldn't normally get, you know, the opportunity for had I not done it. So it was just weighing the benefits of what could be versus not doing it that that pushed that decision for me. Definitely looking at a long term uh, perspective. Uh, Wanda, I want to also ask you, um, what's been some of the classes or just a class that has stuck out to you? given your background? Uh, so I, in terms of like enjoyment, I really like the it's a course that they offer in the beginning called Diverse Teams. Um, it's a very insightful class. Uh, it helps you to understand, you know, um, the importance of uh, not going into team atmospheres with biases and understanding what those look like and how to uh, respond in certain situations. Um, so, so all of that, it, it's been helpful to my immediate working situation uh, because I think when I started this program, I had, I had uh, achieved a lead design position at that time. But since I started, I've graduated to a senior lead design and now I'm a supervisor over a team of people. Um, and so it helps me 
you know, to perform those, the functions that's required for those positions a lot better in, in understanding the people that I'm working with and, and how to lead those people effectively in the organization. So I really enjoyed that class. Um, I really enjoy economics, but I'm just weird. And I think I just really enjoy economics. So <laughs> I really enjoyed that class. There, th those are classes that I, and, and I don't know for any specific reason. I think it's just because it's intuitive and I understand it. And so it's just something that I gravitated to. Um, the finance courses, like I mentioned before, those are challenging. They're interesting, certainly. Uh, coming from an engineering background and sort of thinking about numbers in one way, you, you got to think about them in a different way in accounting. So it was a little different and a bit of a struggle just, just trying to reteach myself how to look at information uh, that I was consuming. Uh, but I did make it through them. So, you know, success. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I enjoy, I think just in general, mostly the classes that I, oddly enough focus on relationships and people. Mm -hmm. And that goes, and that aligns with wanting your future to align somewhere in the management realm. Yeah, I think so. Well, that's, that's great insight to hear and actually have during the program. <laughs> <laughs> um, now kind of going back to Sherry, uh, I know we haven't talked to her in a while, um, but uh, Sherry, I wanted to ask you, you'd mentioned the in-person event events and then kind of like the online events specific for online students. I wanted to ask you if you could just talk more in this area about networking and mentorship and career development that's available um, at the Wake Forest uh, online programming. Absolutely, thank you. Um, yes, in addition to the one MBA events, um, we have um, certainly have career services at, at Wake, we call it um, market readiness and engagement. And we have a dedicated MRE, or career services professional for online MBA students. Um, and they can call and make an appointment with this individual. Um, she might ask them first to go and look at some of the online resources that we have and to kind of get started on their journey and then to make an appointment with her after they have worked through some of the, um, the online materials that we have. Uh, but she is there um, specifically for online MBA students. Um, in addition, at Wake Forest, we consider um, career services or market readiness and engagement a lifelong opportunity. So after they graduate, um, they still have access to a dedicated person who services alumni in the area of career services. So we take this seriously. I think Wake Forest is very well known uh, for this. And so if you all didn't know this, I want you to know that even after graduation, you have access to um, lifelong career services. Um, in addition, we're talking about um, access to executives and to the market. We, we take that very seriously, and there's a few opportunities here. Um, one is that we have um, a, a dedicate, at the university level, we have a center for leadership and character. And in the business school, we have um, a center for leadership and character that's been around for about nine or 10 years. And I have learned recently um, that our students, all students have access to executives through our Center of Leadership and Character. All they have to do is request um, access and our center will connect them to executives and retired executives who want to give back to MBA students. So they come to us and say, we'd like to give back. And, and so we have a repository of very high caliber individuals who um, uh, we'll, we'll talk to students. Another example of access to executives is in the one of the final courses that they take in the program called Global Strategic Management. And they engage in a, a competition throughout the whole um, course of the course. And at the end, um, each student team has to present to a panel of executives that, that we have um, pulled together that are you know, part of the Wake Forest family and they get to present to those executives and interact with them. And, and, and I said that we're an asynchronous program, but there is one time um, when they have to come to class and that is for that global strategic management um, presentation. So it's a great opportunity for them to you know, be up in front of execs. And then uh, let me speak about a completely different opportunity. And this is our global immersion course. As I mentioned, our program started 
right at the height of the pandemic before we had any anything or knew even much about it. And so we had to suspend our global Im immersion courses that are available to all MBA students at that time. But just this spring, we have relaunched our global immersion program and all of our online and MB other MBA students are um, able to go on this trip. Just recently, we, we did two trips. One was to Portugal and Morocco. The other one was to Zurich and Dubai. The trips take place over spring break, so they last about 10 days. And, and we had a number of students from the online program who went on this most recent trip and really enjoyed um, getting to know the other students from the other um, modalities of different um, programs that we have. So Wanda and Kyle, I hope you all will be able to take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, yeah, so I think those are a few things that um, where you can see how connected students can be if they you want to take advantage of the different resources that we have. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, I wanted to ask you a question about technology. You had mentioned that um, you launched the program at the height of the pandemic. Um, how did the program think about technology? Um, how is it incorporated just in coursework, whether talking about the evolution of technology and how it affects business leaders or even just technology as a mechanism of dis distributing the content and coursework? Yeah, so um, um, we have a new dean who's been here for just a year and, and the, the leadership team is actually meeting tomorrow to um, talk about strategic initiatives. And one of her big initiatives, her biggest initiative, I think, is the incorporation of technology um, to enhance student learning. Um, and so, of course, part of our coursework is enhancing students' digital literacy and helping them understand how professionals utilize technology to enable their strategies, um, uh, for example. And so, um, they have a course that talks about this and, you know, talks about AI, which is the big thing these days, and how other emerging technologies um, can enable a business to get, get its work done. Um, but at the same time, we at, in, in the business schools specifically are working very hard to explore new technologies such as virtual reality and how it can be used in the classroom. Um, I don't want to give away too much because I think we're just on the verge of launching um, some very interesting new things, some of which I think will be unveiled into me and to the leadership team a little bit tomorrow. Um, but this is a really important initiative in our school. And so among other things besides AI, we're looking at um, certain kinds of platforms um, that will help support student success and help us um, enhance our student services. So. Um, we have things in place now, but we are also looking at some cutting edge technologies that I think will be incorporated very, very quickly into um, the online uh, MBA as well as other as well as other programs. So I'm very excited um, to see what continues to come down the pike um, from the business school here. Yeah, it sounds we actually have a, a, an, an entire person who's dedicated to researching and discovering these technologies and figuring out how they can be utilized. Thank you, Sherry. I'm going to pivot here and um, go back to uh, Wanda and Kyle and ask, you know, just holistically, what kind of impact the program has had in your current role or your um, hopes for the next steps in your career? And um, I'll start with Wanda. So uh, currently, um, I I think I mentioned this just a moment ago, uh, just uh, this year was promoted to a supervisory position, um, which allowed me to move from a, what we call a professional track, um, the organization where I work into a management track. So that the next, the next promotion that I get, which, which is, uh, I've already been in discussions with management about to be after I'm done with the program, um, I will be official, officially uh, in a management role. Um, so the, the payback for this, it, it came rather quickly. Uh, I, I was able to do some, move, make some movement just in transition. And then I will uh, ultimately get at least into a management position when I finish up my degree. So I'm excited about that. Um, long-term, uh, you know, we, we've kind of already touched on the fact that um, I, I started out you know, and when I was in, in, in truck driving, um, in the truck driving profession, 
uh, in that transitional period, I was a, an instructor, uh, a technical instructor where I taught truck drivers how to drive trucks um, for about two and a half years while I was in engineering school. And so I oftentimes get asked uh, probably, you know, what was the best job you've ever had? And, and I will often answer that was certainly the most rewarding. So I know just based on that experience that um, my passion is to be in a position where I have the opportunity to impact others. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I think I feel like this is going to give me the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. First of all, congratulations. That Thank is you. exceptional. <laughs> um, and we hear that often. And I feel like it speaks to the ROI of, of the business degree. And um, so that's incredible to hear. Uh, Kyle, I wanted to ask you what kind of, given that your ex experience is so unique, and I wanted to ask what kind of applicability you found um, in your day-to-day -day life with the business degree. Yeah, so with day-to-day uh, -day life, um, I think we, we touched on, uh, Sherry was talking about the, um, the course earlier where you learn about um, integrating individuals into teams. Um, we do that constantly and how, how different personalities uh, work with one another. And I think one of the, the things that I've learned is I, uh, emotional intelligence. So I learned how to develop, a, you know, maybe some cues that I'm getting from people, how I'm communicating as well with that. So different, different skill sets you can learn in that. And um, my, my duties include, you know, obviously I'm a, I'm a pilot, but I'm also, I'll be a flight commander where I'll have, you know, 20 or 30 people under me that I have to um, also develop and, and bring up um, in, in, in the Air Force too. So um, some of the skills that I'm getting from just that, the emotional intelligence aspect of it and learning how teams uh, work with one another, um, taking these courses have helped me to um, develop those skills in there. So. Well, thank you, Kyle. And before we wrap up, I want to um, pass it back to you guys one more time and just ask for any final closing thoughts that you might want to give um, about the experience, any sort of advice you want to give to prospective MBA students, anything, take it how you ever, how you like it. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll go, Marty, <laughs> I'm needed. Um, so yeah, so like, like we, we, uh, Sherry was talking about the, the technology and everything like that. It's, it's amazing how we can do so much now with just an internet connection, right? Um, we're talking on zoom right now. You have all these opportunities, uh, within these programs to, um, further yourself and learn, right? And so that's the goal here is what, what can I do to, to, to learn what an MBA is going to do? It's going to, it's going to allow you, um, it, whatever your position is right now to to move up um so that's the 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 goal is to to have at least it gets your foot in the door to have a conversation hey um i have this um it, it demonstrates i I've, I've learned some set of skills that i can benefit your company um as i go forward so um i i think the program's been been well worth it so far so i highly recommend it thanks kyle and wanda I feel like um, I'm offering a recommendation pretty regularly uh, for Wake Forest. I have uh, two, three, I'm sorry, um, coworkers that have started the program after I did. And so <laughs> I oftentimes am helping them, you know, with getting everything set up and get, getting their, their tuition information into our systems and that kind of thing. Um, so uh, what I, I guess the advice and the advice that advice that I often give them, because I think a lot of them suffer from the same, you know, insecurities or questions that I might have had going into it. Um, it's certainly, you know, it's achievable. Um, it may not be easy, but easy isn't necessarily what you want. Um, and if I can do it, they can do it. <laughs> Anyone can do it. Um, but uh, and and I I think back to the comments that were made by Kyle and Sherry in regards to the um, the uh, the uh, team assignments, um, group assignments, excuse me, uh, those allow you to develop um, lifelong relationships and friendships with people that you otherwise uh, would have never had the opportunity to meet likely. And um, oddly enough, through an online program, which is something you would never have expected to begin with. So 
Um, I definitely always have good things to say about, about Wake Forest's program. Thank you, Wanda. And Sherry, I'm gonna to go to you for your final thoughts. And then at the end, if you could please share um, how interested students can get in touch with your school. Uh, before we go to Sherry, just thank you again for being here, uh, both to Wanda and Kyle and sharing their experiences and get letting us get to know about the program. So you can see from the student exemplars that we have included today that there's lots of different kinds of people that are in the MBA program with lots of different backgrounds. Um, we have one halfway across the world. We have one that was a former truck driver with a non-traditional trajectory. And um, the, the MBA program can accommodate all types. And we are happy to um, have uh, such a diverse group of individuals come through our program, um, each cohort that comes through. So. Um, we are excited about that. We're excited about exploring further how we can marry, you know, um, emerging technologies and still maintain the uniqueness of the Wake Forest way in our intimate learning environment. So that will be, you know, a, a direction um, going forward. Um, we're just excited to continue to grow and expand this program. It's a testimony to me that Wanda had brought um, several students with her. Um, our students are our best source of, of future students, so that, that speaks volumes to me. Um, so with that, um, I'm excited to be contacted directly if you are interested in the MBA program, the online MBA program. Um, my name is Sherry Moss. My email address is mosss at wfu.edu. Our lead student success manager is named Stephanie Holland. You can reach her at h-o-l-l-a-n-s at wfu.edu. And finally, you can visit our website, which is business.wfu.edu forward slash MBA forward slash hashtag online. Thank you for having us. And thank you, Sherry. Thank you, guys.